Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly meeting for November 7th, 2022. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Paul Cutler, and I'm a volunteer in the CircuitPython community. What is CircuitPython? CircuitPython is a version of, micro, of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider per purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to the calendar you can view online or to add to your favorite calendar app. We'll also send out notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonista's Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies this meeting and recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we'll post a link for the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next meeting until the next meeting, or until the next week, until the next meeting. And the fifth part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. We'll start off with community news. These are from the Python on Hardware, micro, Python on Hardware newsletter that comes out tomorrow. The first one is the project of the week. This comes from Brian Wellsby, who used a Pimeroni Tufty with an STD41 sensor breakout and MicroPython to make this carbon dioxide and humidity monitor with analog meter aesthetics. He converted some C code to use to MicroPython for the build. The Pimeroni Galactic Unicorn was released with almost 600 RGB LED, matri LED matrixes with amplifier and speakers powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico W running Pimeroni's fork of MicroPython. The LEDs can be strobed at 300 frames per second at 14-bit precision. And make sure to check out the newsletter. There's a couple of different projects that use the Galactic Unicorn already, even though it was just released. And last one comes from Kevin McAleer, who built an AI robot that can tell jokes and the weather. He used Python for the AI, speech synthesis, and voice recognition. The flashy eyes and eye movements are done using MicroPython on the Plasma 2040 and Servo 2040 by Pimeroni. This and more is available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Tuesday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub, at an underscore engineer on Twitter with the hashtag CircuitPython, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with links to share. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. Overall, there were 18 pull requests merged from 12 authors, with some of the new authors looking to be Babplock B, Pit79, Squirtle Squad Leader, and Furbrain. 
with seven reviewers, thanks to Katni, Jepler, Foamy Guy, Lady Ada, Micro Dev One, Tech Trick, and the Kitty, with 25 closed issues from 11 people and 12 new issues opened by nine people. And Hacktoberfest is all over, so that label was removed from 120 issues. Next up is the core. Jeff, will you go over the core for us, please? Hello. It was a bit of a quieter week on the core, in part because uh, Dan was out and I was working on some other things. Uh, however, we did, did still have five pull requests merged from five authors with three reviewers, leaving us with 27 open pull requests. That list is uh, growing a bit, but hopefully Dan and I will get through some of the more recently submitted ones. The older ones are, for the most part, waiting on action from you, the person who submitted the PR. So uh, if you are able to get to that, we encourage you to. If it's not going to happen, maybe it's time to close that PR. And if we are mistaken and it's something on the Adafruit side that needs to happen, please give us a ping on those older pull requests. Um, we have 564 open issues, but we mostly pay attention to our milestones. And the important milestone is the 800 release, which has 27 open issues we'd like to resolve before getting to a stable release. And following that, 13 more open issues that we'd like to uh, fix during the stable release cycle of version 8. Um, as well as that, we've got 497 long-term issues, and that means Adafruit doesn't prioritize working on them right now, but if it's important to you, we encourage you to pick up and resolve those issues. Uh, we've also got four issues not assigned a milestone, and again, that's just because our normal triage of issues hasn't happened, uh, but we'll get that cleared up soon. But, uh, you know, basically, we continue working on stabilizing version 8. Um, I know I've been doing some stuff related to uh, improving async I.O. since we've got some users who are experiencing problems but are also really interested in seeing that work better. And uh, yeah, as usual, it's just we need to work towards a stable version 8. And that's what we've got you, for this week. And now Thank I'll you. turn it yeah. over to Katni to talk about the libraries. Thanks, Paul. So this week, uh, across all the libraries, uh, it's all the CircuitPython libraries, so that's everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras such as our community bundle and our cookie cutter. We have 13 pull requests merged from seven authors and five reviewers. Um, that leaves us with, across all the lids, um, 700 and, I'm sorry, across all the libraries, 41 open pull requests. The oldest one is 769 days old is what I was trying to read. Um, Paul, do you need to, do you need to reload or something? Is it working now? Can you hear other people? I can, but I don't think Paul can hear us. Okay. Tim, are you doing a background recording or a backup recording? I am. I do have a backup running. I, I, okay. Would I can continue? And would you like to uh, continue the meeting then? Yeah. I'm okay. I can do that. I'm Let back. Know. <laughs> I, I, I'm here. I, I actually can hear you again. Oh. Okay, that works. Okay. Then if it cuts out again, Tim can take over. Okay. Thank you for making the backup. I'm so sorry. Um, no worries. No worries at all. It, something happens. Okay, I will continue. Um, so we had 13 pull requests, seven authors, five reviewers, and now we have 41 open pull requests. Uh, there are 18 issues closed by six people and seven open by five people, so we're down a little bit. Um, Hacktoberfest was removed from 102 issues, and that leaves us with 569 open issues with 102 good first issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, 
uh, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, um, including open pull requests, open issues, and some library infrastructure issues. Uh, all of the PRs are listed out with links. Uh, if you're interested in reviewing, check those out. If you've got the hardware, test it. If you don't, take a look at the code. Leave us a comment. Let us know you did. See if you see anything that looks uh, a little bit wrong to you. Um, and that always helps out. Um, if you're interested in continuing that, once you're comfortable with it, you can, uh, one, once you're comfortable with it, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the uh, open issues. Um, if you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. Uh, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help you out. I'm really excited about this next bit. It is the Library PyPI Weekly Download Stats, which we haven't had since 2019. Um, so the total library stats is uh, 200,600 PyPI downloads over 322 libraries. Um, and the top 10 libraries on PyPI include uh, bus device requests, uh, motor, uh, NeoPixel, um, and obviously six others. Um, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, there were no new libraries, but there are five updated libraries that are in the notes if you're interested in checking those out. And that's what I've got for the libraries. Thanks, Katni. Sorry about the technical difficulties there. And now I'll turn it over to Melissa to talk about Blinka. Hello. So Blinka is our MicroPython and CircuitPython or CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython and single board computers like Raspberry Pi. And uh, this week we had zero pull requests merged. There are currently seven open pull requests. And there were two closed issues by one person, one open by one person. And because we removed the Hacktober Fest label, I went ahead and removed the topic off of the different repositories. Uh, we currently have 83 open issues and there were 28,339 PyPI downloads in the last week and 11,367 PyWheels downloads in the last month, leaving us with 98 supported boards. Um, and that's where we're at. Great. Thanks, Melissa. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go around the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting but have Hug Reports in the note stock, I'll read them off as I get to you in the list. And I would like to start with a group hug for everyone. And I'll turn, oh, next up is C. Grover, who is text only. A hug for Foamy Guy for streaming the setup of a new desktop environment. Too many takeaways to list here. Tectric for the enlightening conversation during the recent community help desk. And a group hug to the team and community. Next up is Dan H. Um, I'd like to thank um, Jeff and Microdev, who I had, um, uh, I had to be away last week for extended family reasons. And so uh, thanks very much to Jeff and Microdev for doing extra reviews and you know taking up the slack and doing extra work last week. That was really helpful. Thank you very much. OK. Thanks. Next up is DJ Devin 3 I have a hug report for Deshipu who, for answering a question about MCP uh, T3017 uh, use with the keypad library. Uh, at Foamy Guy for the great live stream on Saturday, it kept me company while desoldering and resoldering 16 through-hole resistors. Uh, so I was listening to the stream, and that was that was pretty nice. Uh, Paul Cutler and Toddbot for another great episode of the Bootloader. I enjoy watching collaborative your collaborative format and being exposed to new stuff out there. Uh, and to Lady Ada for the great search videos every week. As a newbie PCB designer, seeing how components are selected and learning best practices is extremely valuable. Uh, the resistor pack episode alone uh, two weeks ago was a revelation. That's it. Thanks. Foamy Guy, you're up next. into the playground uh, trolls in the recent podcast. I definitely really enjoyed learning about those. Had no idea that something like that was out there. Um, to uh, Jeff for reaching out to a, a GitHub uh, through some support channel for a very strange issue that we saw with 
very specific uh, actions runs seeming to conflict with each other, but being kind of unclear what was causing it, and submitting a fix once they got back and shared the details about what happened. Uh, hug report also for uh, Katni for going over the read the docs setup and sub project uh, URL configuration uh, with me last week. And then a uh, group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Foamy Guy. Jepler? All right. I feel like I've got a long list today. Uh, a hug for you, Dan, for taking some time off when you needed to. Uh, to Katni, I have a feeling I'm about to ask for your help with a guide, so thanks in advance. Uh, Noe, for being excited about an idea I had for a 3D print. We're going to do a little collaborative uh, guide coming up um, in the next month or so. Paul, thank you for running the meeting, and you know, thank you for rolling with it as technology betrays us in various ways. <laughs> uh, to Nick Kumaris, who was asking an interesting question earlier that I could answer about the difference between taking the power of an integer or a floating point number in CircuitPython and Python. Uh, Phil B, I'm looking forward to working together with you on a guide soon. To PT and Lady Ada, thank you for giving me some collaborative projects in the near future. These, uh, this stuff with Noe and with Phil B that I'll be doing. And Lady Ada, thank you for entrusting me with some prototype PCBs to add CircuitPython support for. And finally, a group hug. Um, I love hanging out with you guys. Thanks, Jepler. We love hanging out with you too. Katni, you're up next. Yeah, I was I was just finishing up. I missed people, but I'll get to who I have and and then a group hug to everybody else. Um, so to you, Paul, for swapping hosting the meeting with me today. I was absolutely right that I wouldn't be prepared to do so after a busy weekend, and I greatly appreciated that you agreed to take this on for me. Um, to Tectric for a few wonderful chats over the last week and for picking up the updates discussed in those conversations. Uh, and then specifically, I hug to Tectric for sorting out getting PyPI download stats for the libraries in Blinka for the first time since PyPI stopped providing that data directly. To Keith the EE for helping out with figuring out how to assemble something for a guide when I completely misread the description and would have asked a very stupid question, so thank you for making me look smart again. To Phil B for checking in with me regarding a fritzing object issue he was having, it's usually the other way around, so I uh, really appreciated being able to help uh, fill out uh, versus typically it's him having to help me. And because I didn't get to this until two minutes ago, um, I guarantee I missed some people I meant to include. So a group hug for, for those folks and then a group hug for everybody else as well. Thanks, Katni. Next up is Keith the EE, who is text only, so I'll read that. He has a hug for Katni for helping outline a bill of materials and a great discussion about what should go into a text scrolling LED hat project. And next up is maker Melissa. Hello, I wanted to give a hug to Katni for reviewing a PR I made to CircuitPython.org where I had a bunch of boards and then uh, all the great presenters at a uh, hug to all the great presenters at Hackaday Supercon this weekend and a uh, group hug to everyone else. Thanks. Next up is Mark Gambler, who's missing the meeting, so I'll read for him. He has a hug for me, Paul, for having him on the CircuitPython show podcast. That'll be on at the end of the month in a group hug. Next up is Tectric, who's text only. He has a hug for Katni for the great conversations over the last week. Eva for helping me sort out remaining issues this week resulting from a PyLint upgrade. C. Grover for hanging out for a bit during the community help desk. Jepler and Makler, Mel Maker Melissa for helping me identify and work through failures resulting from the new upgrade the CI made to Python 3.11. Foamy Guy for the interesting streams and for taking issues with Hacktoberfest accepted last week so people could get credit for their contributions. Everyone who participated in Hacktoberfest, both as a contributor or as a reviewer. To the Hacktoberfest organizers for helping to make the contribution process effective, manageable, and enjoyable on all sides of the event. And a group hug. Next up is status updates. Status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too much for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. Um, so as DJ Devin3 mentioned, I have a new episode of The Bootloader with Toddbot out today. Um, we talk a little bit even about a CircuitPython powered open color emitter, which is interesting. And then I recorded a new episode of the CircuitPython show with Mark over the weekend. Look for that by the end of the month. 
Uh, next up is C. Grover, who is text only. Wrapped up the current round of community bundle drivers and helper submissions. The bundle is a hidden gem containing an amazing collection of resources, examples, and inspiration. Refactored the improved thermal camera project code and learning guide to get it ready for CircuitPython 8.0 was able to squeeze a 20% frame rate performance improvement by applying MicroLab in places that weren't obvious the first time around. Projects like this clearly demonstrate the power of this community's nurturing support for burgeoning non-expert programmers like me. A friend's vintage Ibanez FL9 Flanger guitar pedal, I hope I pronounced some of the right, showed up in the workshop needing some capacitor th therapy. DigiKey had all the caps in stock. Nice to get back to some through-hole soldering. Won't need the magnifier for this project. Getting back to the retro KTV based on Foamy Guy's Nico Kitty project. Coding is done, but the two hand-built cabinets need to be finished before the year-end holidays if they are to count as gifts for our cat collector friends. And next up is Dan H. Okay, thanks. So as I mentioned, I was away from work last week, so I'm just going to re-up. <clears throat> the two things I said I was going to work on in the next week, um, I'm going to. I, we have some users have some clues about the LC709 203F issue on ESP32 S3s. I'm going to take a look on that at that, and then there are a bunch of puzzling uh, network problems on various Espressif boards, and I'd like to look at those also. And there's some also some sleep issues, though they're a little bit more idiosyncratic. I'll look at those also. Okay. Thanks, Dan. DJ Devin3, you're up next. Last week, I went on Show and Tell with my uh, Dragon Skull Mask, Adafruit Show and Tell, and I had a lot of fun. Uh, it wasn't a particularly hard project, but what really increased difficulty was the short deadline to Halloween. I only had a couple days to make the thing. Uh, and I really wanted to mention, and I forgot on show and tell, that CircuitPython's fast iteration process is really what made that project possible. I mean, the scepter alone was added to the costume one hour before trick-or-treaters started showing up. Uh, because I would have had to wait minutes between iterations with Arduino's co compile times, I don't think I would have gotten that done in time using Arduino. So CircuitPython in particular made my Halloween a success and had a blast and was totally worth all the effort. Uh, this week, one of the coolest things that happened to me was Make Magazine followed me on Twitter after seeing the Dragon Skull um, featured on Show and Tell. And that might actually appear in the next episode of DigiKey's Maker Update. There's no promises or anything there, but that was that was really cool. Uh, I soldered up my first 1.2 rev board of the TR Cowboy, uh, Cowboy, Cowbell sequencer during Foamy Guy's live stream on Saturday morning. Confirmed all the LD, LEDs and switches are working. Everything works without any bodge wire this time. I'm very happy with that and the updated design. Everything was working great so far. Uh, now it's just a matter of writing the software in CircuitPython. And as far as I know, I can't use the keypad or debouncer library because they're incompatible with the MCP-23017 chips. Uh, and I tried Naradoc's, um scanner library for that, but I couldn't get that to work. And that's probably my fault for an iteration or an initialization issue. Uh, and this is my main project right now, and I'm really excited to get back to it. Because of that, I completely slacked on working on PRs this week. I still have some PRs sitting in limbo waiting to be fixed, and I apologize to reviewers who are waiting on me to do those uh, pre-commit checks. And that's what I got. Thanks for the update. Foamy guy? All right, thank you. Um, so couple things. Uh, last week, I modified the uh, screenshot generator, the project screenshot generator that's used for learn guides and uh, library examples um, to include CSV files. It has a, a list of certain types of files that it includes in the screenshots and certain types of files that it doesn't. Um, so we added CSV to that because some of the projects use them, but it wasn't in the uh, in getting included previously. Um, after getting that bit of it done uh, and making a PR with it, it became apparent the CI needed a couple fixes. So I uh, poked around and got those uh, fixed up at least to the point of passing, although uh, it's very possible that some of the changes may be not necessary in the long run. I think maybe there's other stuff in the works that could affect it. Um, so uh, but we got that stuff passing. Um, 
I went over uh, with Katni uh, last week the read the docs setup process um, and the, the sub project URL that gets used for all the different docs pages. Um, namely, like the badge that's in the README is the main place where I usually link it from. It's probably linked in other places as well, but went over how to get all that stuff set up. Uh, and then the last couple of days of last week and through. Um, through kind of the end of this week, I've got some other stuff going on, so I've been a bit lighter on CircuitPython than normal. Some of that stuff is uh, voted early uh, last week um, for the election day that's upcoming. Uh, I think tomorrow is the actual day. Um, I, a new computer, I think I mentioned it last week, I got a new computer that arrived on Friday, and I've been working on getting everything set up, installed, and configured uh, to my liking. I set up the CircuitPython dev environment specifically on a stream on Saturday for folks that are interested in the tools that I use most frequently or how to get them set up on Linux. Um, it was, it has been and is still uh, into this week unseasonably warm in my area, um, which has been nice because there's a good bit of pre-winter yard work like collecting leaves and mulching leaves and all kinds of stuff that I've been doing. Um, and then through the latter part of this week, I'll be off for a couple of days uh, to have some fun with birthday activities uh, with myself and my wife. Um, and that's what I have going on. Thanks. Thanks. And yes, tomorrow is election day. So remember to go out and vote if you haven't done, done it already. Next up is Jepler. Hello again. Um, I was writing this in a hurry and last week just feels like a blur. So this is uh, missing some things that I did. But uh, I fixed some more async IO bugs that I created. Um, there was a problem with how we kept time, and it has to match between some C code and some Python code. And I thought I'd fixed it. I thought I'd tested it, and it was still wrong. Uh, so I put in another PR relative to that. And uh, the other thing I've been doing is some testing on pre-release Adafruit boards to make sure they work with CircuitPython and Arduino, and that is going to continue on for a little bit. This week, uh, I am working on a guide for the Scorpio board. It was announced around about a year ago. It's a feather wing that can drive eight NeoPixel strips in parallel. And I will be adding a new CircuitPython library called NeoPixel8 that will support the Scorpio and other RP2040 base boards that drive lots of LED strands. Um, and a lot of other stuff, but those are the highlights that are right on the top of my head. So thank you. Thank you. Katni, you're up next. All right. So last week, the PCF8575 guide, which I finished the previous week, I think, uh, was published. Um, continued working through the Pi Cowbell guide. I'm a little less than three fifths of the way through the assembly images. Um, seems fairly precise, but there's five pages. So it's kind of obvious about how far I've gone. Uh, but I finally figured out a system that took the overwhelming part out of the situation and was finally able to get into a groove with that. So that should go uh, faster this week than it um, did starting last week. I met with Alec about getting the PyPI download stats going, and I met with Tim about the final steps to getting documentation going on a new library. This week, um, continue the Pi Cowbell guide. That's my initial focus. Uh, finish up the assembly page images and the assembly pages to go with them. And then uh, the overview, the pinouts page, uh, CircuitPython and Arduino pages, and the downloads pages are left beyond that. Um, the CircuitPython and Arduino pages should be relatively simple. They are simply going to uh, include I squared C scan code for you to run to find the whatever you have plugged into the Stemma I squared C sensor or whatever Stemma I squared C connector on the Pi Cowbell to find whatever sensor you have attached. Um, it doesn't go because there's no specific code to use with the Pi Cowbell. It's a proto board. Um, so that's all that's going to be is to run that to make sure that you know it's connected properly um and then i need to blog up the pcf8575 guide being published i have an addition to the code of conduct regarding unnecessary tagging of individuals or roles being prohibited and i will pr it um so and and post it to the circuit python dash dev channel once that's in uh, so that way other folks can uh, contribute suggestions or um ideas or, or, or so on uh, to make sure we get the wording on it right. Um, and uh, after a couple days, it'll get merged. Uh, so then next up, and also very eventually on my list, uh, which is to say, uh, this is not in order, but it's all things I have to get through. 
Um, the CH9102F is going to be added to the existing driver installation guide. Um, it's a breakout for the chip that's on many other boards. Um, so we'll add a page that basically says like, hey, you can actually test this using these driver installs, um, which is a little backwards. Usually products get a product guide with an explanation of what to do. This one is an explanation of what to do, including a product mention. Um, I'll be doing the guide for the iSpy breakout. We have a Stemma hub that we recently released that is also getting a guide. Uh, a ton of miscellaneous, which is mostly guide page updates and template additions to guides. Um, I still need to add using an external Wi-Fi antenna to the Wi-Fi mailbox guide. I'm going to be adding the Metro Mini V2 to the Metro Mini guide. Um, there's a guide on getting API keys from Twitter, uh, which uh, was posted relatively recently, but I also uh, went through the process more recently. So I was asked to just review that guide and make sure the process is still the same. Um, and then uh, there's going to be a project on using CircuitPython to maybe parse an RSS feed. It might end up being JSON because we've already got that in place to send the parse data to Twitter um, and Mastodon. Um, that's going to be using a Pico W and I will be working with Liz on that project uh, for um, her to be doing uh, the side of it where you actually display the data on a display. And then finally, a project that's a holiday countdown project with a QT quad alphanumeric display backpack and um, a Cutie Pi ESP32 S2 and Adafruit IO. Um, so that will, and that's working with Noah and Pedro for a 3D printed case for that. Um, so I'm pretty much set for a while. And that's what I got. Thanks, Katni. Maker Melissa, you're up next. Hi. Uh, so this uh, this last week, I had my Clue Robot uh, guide that was published uh, this past week. And I updated the uh, Google Assistant Learn guide and any and some code associated with that. And then I blogged up about both of those guides. Uh, I added a wiring diagram to the 1.3 inch TFT Learn guide, uh, or it's 1.3 and 1.54 inch. Uh, I added some updates to uh, circuitpython.org. Uh, there's still a couple PRs that are waiting to be reviewed. Um, I fixed an issue with uh, the Pi TFTs not rotating correctly in console mode um, on the Raspberry Pi. And I archived, unarchived the web serial ESP tool uh, repo and updated the code from the Mabucasa fork. And um, then I went ahead and I added GitHub Actions to compile the TypeScript into uh, the release. And I also submitted some Blinka and platform detect fixes. And this week, I'm going to continue working on GitHub issues and learn guide updates. And that's where I'm at. Thanks, Maker Melissa. And I will read off the last two status updates, starting with Mark Gambler. Uh, items coming up in life and some burnout post Halloween projects have had not really have had me not really doing much. Hope to get back into it soon. As usual, if something I worked on or comes up, feel free to ping me on Discord. And last is Tectric. Last week hosted a spooky community help desk. Glad we were able to identify and work through many of the remaining PRs and at least give initial review feedback. Upgraded the CI for all the libraries to use composite actions as well as work with Python 3.11, which is now the default Python version used. Managed to get statistics about PyPI downloads using Google BigQuery, which are then inserted into the daily report. This week, clean up issues newly revealed by the upgraded PyLint for about 50 libraries. Fix an issue where circuitpython.org is not updating contribution information. Finalize a new page in the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle that will update daily with the weekly PyPI download information from BigQuery. Start preparing the test library repo that will help test changes to the new CI. And keeping an eye out for issues resulting from the new Python version or the upgrade CI. Please don't hesitate to reach out if something in the CI isn't working. And that was status updates. Next up is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions that either come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure that they get added while we're discussing other things. Um, there's no topics this week, unless anyone has anything to, to add. 
So otherwise, I will wrap up. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for November 7th, 2022. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.